if you look at page one, question seven, okay, page one, question seven, just have a look at this one first. There's this one part here I need to explain using transformers. Okay, uh, this one is EM induction, but it's also transformers. Let me just open up the notes. There is AC circuits. Yeah, this one. Let me just open it up. Okay, right. Uh, the question in page one is about the workings of a transformer. You know, this one they tell you. Oh, page one, the continuation is second page actually. Wait, no, wait, no, sorry. Page one, we actually did question seven already. Uh, I'm actually referring to this. It's page two, sorry. Page two. Page two of your worksheet. This particular question we did part a already part b is the one that i didn't really explain yet okay so here they ask you to explain why the alternating current in the primary core of a transformer is not in phase with the alternating emf induced in secondary core okay so why is it that alternating current in primary core of a transformer is not in phase with alternating current induced in the secondary core Right, so this one, let me just explain it from your AC circuit chapter. Okay, you have your AC circuit notes with you? Uh, yes, I do. Let's have a look at your AC circuit notes, uh, page four. Okay. This one, I'm jumping into AC circuits already, one specific part. Page four of your notes. For AC circuits. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. So you have the notes, right? Yes. Okay. So I will just explain to you briefly the workings of a transformer. All right. Okay. Now, when you did IGCSE or SPM, we will tell you the function of a transformer is to step up or down voltages right the purpose of a transformer that you learned in the previous level was that we tell you the purpose of a transformer is to step up or down voltages okay, okay. so that is the purpose of a transformer that you learned in the previous level before this and then after that there was a equation that you also use before this when it comes to transformer because you know that a transformer usually has what we call primary call and secondary call to it there's a particular equation where we tell you that the ratio of the number of calls on the secondary call to primary call is the same as the voltage at the secondary call to primary call. Okay, this one was the thing that you learned last time in your ICCSE or SPM. Okay, now in A2, uh, in A level A2, we will learn a bit more about this. We will learn specifically how does your transformer actually work. Now, your transformer consists of usually a primary call like this. This one is your primary, and then it also consists of your secondary core that looks like this. Okay, it's basically a solenoid in itself. A primary core is a solenoid, a secondary core is also a solenoid. Okay, so it consists of many calls or many turns of wire. So now, what we know is that when you let current run through the primary call, now, when we let current run through your primary call, because I the, the primary call is actually similar to a solenoid in itself, we know that you're going to have a magnetic field being produced inside your solenoid. That probably looks like this, right? Okay. 
But what is the problem with this kind of arrangement is that you see, my secondary core is here, my primary core is here. My magnetic flux for my primary core can't really link to the secondary core, right? Right? Mm -hmm. So yes. if I just leave it as like this, lah, where I just put the primary core and secondary core close to each other, the primary core can't really link to the secondary core. The magnetic flux of the primary core can't really link to the secondary core. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So how do I actually link the magnetic flux of my primary core to my secondary core? That's where you will need to use your iron core, right? So mm -hmm. the normal transformer you always see in your diagram always has some other additional thing to it that looks like this. This one is, say, your secondary primary. Your actual transformer, a lot of times what you see is that it looks like this. There is something what we call an iron core to it, right? So here, if I have that same primary and secondary core, but this time I go and wind it around an iron core, while well, I can say that current runs through my primary core like this, it's going to produce a magnetic flux. But because of the presence of the iron core here, the iron core has the effect of strengthening and extending my magnetic field. Just now, in one of the example, the example here, I mentioned to you that the ferrous core has the effect of strengthening your magnetic field as well as extending your magnetic field, right? Correct? So it's something similar here. Your iron core has not only the effect of strengthening your magnetic field, but it also has the effect of extending your magnetic field. It has the effect of redirecting your magnetic field. So now your magnetic field, okay. the magnetic flux actually looks like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So it looks like this right now. So your iron core actually has a purpose. We normally say to you its purpose is to improve flux linkage with secondary core. Okay, the purpose of your iron core is to improve flux linkage with your secondary core. Okay, so this is what's happening right now. Okay, so from here, we will then tell you that your current in primary call your current in primary call continuously varies is an alternating current your current in primary call is an alternating current so when it's an alternating current, what this means is that your current continuously changes. So when your current continuously changes, your magnetic flux also continuously changes. Okay. Your magnetic flux also continuously changes. Now, when we say alternating current, alternating current, I briefly mentioned to you before that it looks like this. Wait, let me just uh, draw it out for you. I mentioned that your alternating current could look like this. Wait, let me draw it out properly for you. It looks like this. This is your alternating current. So one of the things I mentioned to you was that there's always going to be a positive and negative right for alternating current. Right, that time I mentioned to you, this is an example of alternating current where you see that your current is actually flowing in two different directions because you have positive and negative. Okay, but at the same time, because you see that your shape is like this, your current is actually continuously changing. 
air current continuously changes. And then because your current continuously changes, your magnetic flux also continuously changes. Because you see in the EM induction chapter, we mentioned this, didn't we? Your B is proportional to I. And then your B is also proportional to flux. So if you combine these two together, your B is proportional to flux, or you can also, your current is proportional to flux, or current is proportional to flux linkage, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So here, we can say that because your current is continuously changing, your magnetic flux continuously changes. So this flux is represented by these orange lines here, right? Okay, the orange lines here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but then after that, we also know one thing. The... The, the, the other thing we also know is this, since the flux links with secondary call, the secondary call experiences changes in flux linkage okay so this one makes sense because uh of the iron call that we have it links the magnetic flux from primary call to secondary call and then since current in primary call changes the magnetic flux of your primary call changes but at the same time because your flux is linking with the secondary call it causes the secondary call to experience a change in flux linkage right mm -hmm. so therefore emf is induced in secondary call, okay? This is where your voltage in primary call comes about. And we know that when you have voltage, you have current, right? This is also where your induced current, your, your secondary call current also comes about, okay? So here we have in EMF is induced in the secondary call. Current is also induced. So what we have now will be that suddenly here also would have a current as well as voltage in the secondary call. Okay, in the secondary call, you suddenly have current as well as voltage. This is all produced through EM induction. Okay, so there's one thing here that we will want to ex uh, we want to know: how does the EMF induced in the secondary call vary with time? Okay, so let's look at this one. This one is the current, variation of current with time. If I want to change this to flux with time, flux linkage with time, I would have this same Graph shape with a this same graph shape. Okay, so this graph here represents the variation of current with time in the primary call. Mm -hmm. This one is in primary call. Then after that, if I want to represent the variation of flux linkage with time in secondary call, it will also look like this, right? Because you see this one here, the relation was this. B is proportional to I, B is proportional to flux. If I combine them, I is proportional to flux or rather I is also proportional to flux linkage, right? So this one here is the graph of variation of flux linkage with time in my secondary call. Okay, so this one, I can say that this one is under the primary, yeah, this one is, in the primary call. And then this one here is in the secondary call. Okay. So this one is the variation of the flux linkage with time in my secondary call. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I then want to plot a graph of variation of EMF induced with time 
in my secondary core. So now I will, the last thing I want to do is I want to plot out the EMF in secondary core. All right. Now you may be tempted to say that or oh, the graph of EMF versus time induced in my secondary core would also look like this. This one is actually not correct because of how EMF is defined in the first place. Now we know that EMF is actually rate of change of flux linkage, which is actually the gradient of your flux linkage time graph. So what we can do here is that when we want to change your graph from flux linkage time to EMF time, you actually have to look at the graph gradient now. So let's just say right now, I'm going to draw some imaginary lines here for you, like this. You know. I draw some imaginary lines that look like this for you. So these lines here. Okay, now, where do you suppose my gradient is zero? These points, these points, and this point is where my gradient is zero. So it will be here zero, here zero, and here zero, okay? But where do you then suppose is where my gradient is maximum? My gradient is maximum around, you know, what color can I use? Okay, I'll use green. My gradient is maximum around here, 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 and here, right? But this one is positive maximum gradient. This one is negative. This one is positive maximum gradient. This one is negative, right? So this one is positive maximum gradient. It will be here. This one is negative maximum gradient. It will be here. Positive again here. Negative maximum gradient will be here. Okay. If I have positive maximum gradient, I will have positive maximum EMF because EMF is equals to my gradient. If I have zero gradient, that means I have zero EMF. Okay. Then this one here, I have negative maximum gradient. That will mean I have negative maximum value. Okay. So those points here are meant to represent that. Now, if I go and plot the graph out, it will look like this, okay? Now, these two graphs, all these graphs are still known as sinusoidal graph. These are, you know, this is considered to be sinusoidal. This one is also still considered to be sinusoidal, okay? Sinusoidal just simply means that it curves like this. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because sometimes when people mention sinusoidal, they automatically assume that it's a sine graph. That's not necessarily true. A sine graph is a sinusoidal graph. A cos graph is also a sinusoidal graph. When we say sinusoidal, it actually really just refers to the way in which it varies, which is a curve, like, like what you're seeing here. Okay. So now I want to focus on the last two diagrams here. I know that both diagrams are sinusoidal, but are they exactly the same? Okay, uh, let me just rephrase the question a little. Is there a phase difference between the this graph and this graph? Do you remember the concept of phase difference? Um, 90, more than 90 degrees, is it? More than 90, uh, the yeah. difference between them, okay, la, the phase difference, you take crest and crest, is actually 90 degree phase difference, mm -hmm. okay? It's not, it's not more than 90. The phase oh. difference is exactly 90. Oh, okay, okay. all right. Mm -hmm. So right now you see your EMF is actually having a phase difference of 90 degrees, okay? Right, mm -hmm. okay, so this one I explained already. Why do I need to explain? such a long-winded working here for you is because you need this to answer your question in part 
uh, page two, part B, right? They ask you to explain why the alternating current in the primary core of a transformer is not in phase with the alternating EMF induced in secondary core. So the explanation is basically this one. I mean, the, the understanding is basically this. They are just asking you right now, why is it that the alternating current in my primary call, not the same, not is not in phase with the EMF induced in my secondary call. Why aren't they having the same phase? Okay, now part of the reason was because you will notice that it's because we take the gradient to get the EMF, right? That's yes. the reason why they don't we don't get them in phase. All right, so let me just explain this one. Okay, this one is June 15, P42. Let me just open out the question. Yeah, the answer is bottom here. Okay. So the long winded answer, the, the, the answer would be what you, is written here in the screen right now that you can see. So I'll just go through it sentence by sentence with you. This is for four marks. You will just say something like this. The current in the primary call, wait, uh, let me just try to zoom it out a bit more. Okay. So what you can say is something like this. Current in primary call gives rise to a magnetic field that links to the secondary call. All right, this is what we saw just now. As the current in your primary call varies, the magnetic field varies in phase with it. The flux linkage in secondary call changes, thus inducing an EMF in the secondary call. As EMF induced is proportional to rate of change of flux linkage, it will therefore not be in phase with the alternating current mm -hmm. okay so this is something like the full answer or explanation there okay so i let you copy it a bit i'm sure it's impossible to wrap off a uh, screen uh this i'll just wrap off the this one is it better this way? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll just throw it off. I think the important one will be the diagram on the right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one is one part. Then after that, I can proceed to explain all the way up to transformers. Okay, so just let me know once you're done. Then after that, maybe I need to explain a bit more about transformers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, this one is done. Okay, right. Uh, is it okay if I just continue explaining a bit more about transformers since we are under EAC circuits? Yeah. Okay, right. So let me just continue explaining a bit more. I think we'll go on until at least 3.30. Uh, since we're in the transformer portion, let me just continue explaining about the transformers. Okay, so now that we know how does a transformer actually work, how does your current or voltage actually come about in your secondary core, there are some equations that you also need to know. So as I mentioned to you just now, you will need to know that the ratio of your secondary core turns to primary core turn is the same as the voltage across your secondary core to your primary core. This is what you would have learned in IGCSE or SPM, okay? So there's also another variation to this same equation, which is new to your uh, A-level, sorry, which is new, which is something new, like you haven't learned in the previous chapter. Like. That one is the variation, the current. What is the relation of your current with the primary and secondary core? Now, while we can say that 
vs to vp sorry i'm gonna better just start from here well we can say that ns to np is the same as vs to vp when it comes to current is the other way around is ip to is okay you see there's a bit of a difference in the pattern okay so when it comes to the ratio of the current with the voltage or the number of call turns, this one will be IPIS. Now, why is the reason that it's like that? Now, it's because of this. You see, uh, if I talk to you about the transformer, my transformer, as you already know, you have a primary call as well as a secondary call. Now, you can think of your transformer as having an input power and output power. Your input power is from your primary call. Your output power is from your secondary call. Okay, this is where your input is. This is where your output is in terms of power. You put in power to your transformer at the primary call. You get out power from your secondary call. Now, if your transformer is ideal at 100% efficiency, we can say that whatever P in is the same as whatever P out you have. And at the same time, we know that power is equals to VI from your uh, electricity chapters before this. So I can say that VP IP is the same as VS IS. So if I rearrange this one, I will get VS over VP is the same as IP over IS. That's why my resulting equation looks like this. Okay, Vs over Vp is Ip over Is, but at the same time, Vs over Vp is Ns over Np. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the equation that you kind of need to know when it comes to calculations using your transformers. Okay, and then not only that, there's also some other things that I need to go on. When it comes to transformers, uh, you need to know what are the sources of energy loss in the transformer. This is you see the next page in your notes. Okay, now transformers will have some power loss. They are not hundred percent efficient. So your questions will a lot of time ask you, what were the sources of power loss inside your transformer? So the most easiest, the the easiest source of the, the easiest one to say would be that your source of power loss is from your core resistance. Okay, you see your transformer consists of coils of wires, right? Your wire is made out of conductor, it's made out of metal. When current is flowing through them, they definitely have resistance. So the resistance will cause heating effect, it's going to dissipate off energy, it's going to cause power loss. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here the first source of loss for your transformer will be your core resistance. It causes energy to be dissipated due to the heating effect occurring in the coils. You can actually reduce this power loss by using a high conductivity copper wire. High conductivity here just means low resistance. Now. Okay, so the first source of power loss is your core resistance. Now the second source of your power loss is what you call as eddy currents. Okay, just now I asked you to just ignore the mention of eddy current that I mentioned that I'll explain it again in AC circuit, specifically mm -hmm. in transformer. Okay, yeah. so now what are actually eddy currents? All right, so your transformer, you would have eddy currents. Eddy current is actually inside your iron core. Okay, eddy currents is inside your iron call all right mm -hmm. so how does any current come about in the first place just now i mentioned to you that your magnetic flux from your primary call will link to your secondary call and as your current varies in the primary call it causes the magnetic flux to change and then since your magnetic flux links with the secondary call it causes the secondary call to experience a change in flux linkage Therefore, you have EMF as well as induced current. Now, at the same time, notice that your iron core 
it's actually a, your magnetic flux is also passing through your iron core. It is linking with the secondary core, that's correct. But at the same time, it's also passing through your, uh, your iron core, all right? So as your magnetic flux changes, you can also say that the magnetic flux through your iron core is also changing. Your iron core is experiencing changes in flux linkage, or sorry, your iron core is experiencing changes in magnetic flux. Therefore, you will have induced EMF, also you would have induced current, right? Correct? So that is what we call as eddy current, all right? Eddy current here more specifically refers to the current induced inside your iron core of your transformer, okay? So we know that current flowing through a conductor will dissipate heat, right? Mm -hmm. So the eddy currents inside the iron core will actually dissipate a lot of heat, okay? It will actually dissipate heat, okay? Mm -hmm. So this heat, we must come from somewhere. In our case, it actually came from the input power of your transformer. Sorry, yeah, it actually, uh, the, your energy loss was actually taken from the input power of your transformer, okay? So this causes energy loss. So what are the ways in which you can actually cut down eddy currents? This one is by having lamination, okay? When you have lamination, you will actually reduce eddy current. Okay, so laminated construction of call custom possible pass or for the flow of eddy currents. You can just say this now to reduce eddy currents, use laminated iron core. Laminated iron core is where you are just constructing the iron core out of sheets of metal. Okay, like this one. This is what we call a laminated iron core. If you construct it out of solid core like this, you're going to have a large eddy current. You're going to have large heat dissipation. You're going to have large energy loss. But when you have lamination, mm -hmm. you're going to have lower eddy currents less heat loss, therefore, less energy loss. No? Okay. Okay. So that is the second source of your uh, power loss in your transformer. Now, the third loss of power in your transformer is magnetic flux leakage. Okay. Now, bear in mind that this is called leakage, not linkage. Huh? The linkage that we were talking about is different from this. Magnetic flux linkage is where we say that some of the magnetic flux produced in the primary core may not link with your secondary core. What it means is that it could be that when you have magnetic flux produced by your secondary, uh, by, by your primary core, some of them didn't actually link with your secondary core. It could be that maybe you have a stray magnetic flux like this. This one is what we call as flux leakage. You see this particular magnetic flux wasn't able to link with the secondary core. This is your magnetic flux linkage, leakage. So this one is also another cause of energy loss. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So that one is okay. Okay. The other one is hysteresis. Hysteresis is the reluctance of the material to undergo changes in magnetization. Okay, now this one, hysteresis, I think I will just skip this one now because this one is not a common thing that they would normally uh, want you to do. Okay. As long as you remember these three, you'll, you'll be fine. Okay. Hysteresis is also another source of energy loss in the transformer. Okay. But this one is a very, very rare answer. This is not the common answers that they expect you to write. Although you can write this, but it's not a common one. I would rather you just remember the first three. Okay. Hysteresis is just simply the reluctance of a material to undergo changes in magnetization. During each cycle of AC, the core reverses polarity of magnetization, which requires energy. Therefore, you have energy loss. 
Okay, but this one, if I need to explain, it was going to take another 10 minutes or so. But then again, it, it's also not really going to be tested. You're not going to use this in your exam. So I just skip this one, right? Okay, so this one is for transformer. And then another thing that I would probably need to explain a little is this one. Wait on. Okay, let me just clear off everything. Now, uh, one thing that you will need to know about transformer is that you know, for transformer, I mentioned that you use it to step up or down voltages, right? Okay. Now, for transformer, you will normally either use it to step up or down voltages. One thing you need to know about transformer is this. For power transmission to consumers, voltage is usually step up. Okay, meaning to say, let's just say that you produce your power at your power plant, and then before you send it to a house, the power plant has a transformer there, okay? So before your power plant sends you power to your consumer here, the house here, through the electrical transmission cables that you see here, what they normally do is they will step up the voltage before transmitting the electrical power to your consumer, okay? So the reason for that is mainly due to this. If you recall the equation for voltages, where we tell you that VP to V, sorry. If you recall the equation for transformers, we tell you VS to VP is the same as NS to NP, the same as IP to IS. Specifically, you look at this one and this one. Okay. They have an inverse relation. So what this tells you here is that when voltage is stepped out, when voltage is stepped out, current decreases. Okay, when voltage is stepped out, current decreases. So since power loss, equals to since power loss in trans in transmission cable since power loss in transmission cable is p loss equals to i square r which is this one if i decrease power loss would decrease okay you see when you want to uh, send power from your power plant to your house ideally during the transmission of your electricity all the way to your house your you don't want to lose the energy right correct mm -hmm. so when you transmit your electricity from your power plant to your house you ideally do not want to suffer any power losses or energy losses okay mm -hmm. But you cannot avoid it because when you want to transmit your electricity, you want to transmit your current, it has to go through uh, electrical wiring. It has to go through some sort of electrical cable or conductor. So conductors by themselves have some degree of resistance. So no matter how you do it, you will still have some power loss. But what you want to do now is that although you cannot prevent the power loss, you can minimize it. One way of minimizing power loss is if you go and reduce the current through the cables in the first place. Okay, so if your current is reduced, your power loss will reduce because power loss is given by the equation P I square R. It comes from this equation for power P is I square R, right? Power has three different forms. Either is P equals P to V R. 
or p goes to i square r or p goes to b square over r. We are using this form for this one. Okay. Okay. Right. So this is power loss in your transformer. Okay. 